Ron English had spent 35 years as production manager at his family's Florida citrus business when the state was hit by citrus greening, a disease that has ravaged Florida's iconic orange and grapefruit industry. About 2015, we decided that greening had hurt us enough to where we, the quality of the fruit wasn't there. And it, it, when it hit us, it hit us hard. It didn't gradually go out. It, uh, all that we did to try to, what we knew to do to keep the trees alive didn't work. So we made a, a decision just to shut our operation down. My father-in-law and our family had been in since 1895. Life-changing decisions like this one have become common across Florida since citrus greening, also referred to as HLB, emerged in 2005. Since that time, producers in the state have lost 63% of their citrus-bearing acres. While some owners of those 429,000 acres of former groves switched to other forms of agriculture or kept the land, others sold to developers. We were able to sell uh, something I, we didn't want to do where we once have groves or subdivisions, strip centers, malls. Citrus greening caused by a bacteria spread by the tiny non-native Asian citrus psyllid destroys orange, grapefruit, tangerine, and other citrus trees. English recently saw a 1950s ad showing children drinking Florida orange juice. It reminded him how long Americans have associated Florida with oranges. Now the state's orange production has plummeted 90 percent from nearly 150 million 90-pound boxes in 2005 to 15.8 million boxes in 2023, the lowest annual production since the 1930s. But English has found himself back in an orange grove feeling hopeful. He oversees a test grove for a company called Soil Sia which has licensed the rights to further develop and commercialize precision-bred citrus trees from the University of Florida. Plant biologist Nian Wong and university colleagues used CRISPR technology, a genome editing tool, to develop trees that can still survive and produce fruit despite exposure to the devastating bacteria. The trees contain no foreign DNA from other plants or animals. If successful, these genetically edited trees and rootstock could revive citrus production in Florida and save it elsewhere. This problem is not only Florida problem, it's a worldwide problem. In all the major citrus production area, in Asia, in like Brazil, uh, in, in, in the United States, we all have the same problem. About 50 miles from Wong's Central Florida labs, Soil Sia's Tampa area facility houses a dozen employees who are rapidly refining the most promising genetic edits. Early results have been positive with the first priority on Valencia and Hamlin orange varieties and an edited rootstock for grafting. What we're doing is finding the specific genes that are susceptible to HLB and using CRISPR precision breeding to turn off this interaction. And this occurs all the time in nature and we have a tree that we're saying is showing early HLB resistance. We hope it's gonna last for a lot longer, but we only have trees that have been in the field for a couple of years. Every six months, we, we retest them, right? To see if the bacteria is growing in the tree and what's going on. And every six months, we're getting more and more confident. Lagos and his colleagues are also working on citrus greening resistant grapefruit and mandarin oranges. We have to screen lots and lots of plants and different combinations of different CRISPR edits to see what plant, um, you know, has the desired edit and is which one has the desired, um, you know, traits of, of resistance that we're hoping for. We spend a lot of time, these plants take six months to a year to get to the stage where they're in soil. So we have to be very thorough in screening so that all the effort we're devoting for, you know, isn't a waste. In the past decade, Floridians have tried one possible solution after another, from spraying to kill the insects, to tenting the young trees to protect them. All either failed or required costly repeated treatments. We do feel the pressure they, they get it to growers quickly because I mean, I mean, they're really struggling, right? It's really, I mean, it's a real testament to the growers that they've stayed in this industry, even with citrus screening. And now they may be close. 
How do you know they're disease resistant? Well, you got to put it into the field, right? You have to expose it to the sill. You have to expose it to the disease. So far, researchers say the trees that result from precision breeding look much healthier than the control trees. Different gene targets are showing tolerance where the plant actually still gets infected, but it's a big, beautiful tree compared to the controls. We're seeing others where the, the amount of bacteria in the plant is so low or almost undetectable compared to the controls. All that work in University of Florida and Soil Sea Labs and greenhouses may finally bear fruit. Literally, they hope. But it takes almost half a decade before citrus trees produce significant amounts of fruit, after which traits such as taste and yield will need to be evaluated. If everything goes well, I think we'd be looking at the end of 2026 or maybe spring of 2027 where we kind of get those first commercial trees out there. But they're going to still have to plant these trees in numbers. And it's going to take four, five years, even, you know, even maybe a little longer, before it's at full production. So they'll really start bringing the industry back. It's going to take some time. As for Ron English, he is once again optimistic that his grandchildren might someday have the opportunity to get the family back into the citrus business. This what we're doing I th is the key to getting back. And, and once we can get people started and start planting, I think they'll, it'll catch on. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.